So we're looking at number 14. Um, as I look at 14, first off, yesterday in class we talked about this being 5 to the 1 and that even though there's no exponent, that it's always understood if there's nothing written there that there is a 1. Okay? And then we moved the 5 to the 2 up there and said, oh, this is 5 to the first times 5 to the second, which gave us 125. So helping me out with number 14, negative 6. Should I move that? Does it have a negative exponent? You need to have your workbook on this page so that you are correcting yours at the same time and yours is open to this page. Where would yours be? Um, so, some of you don't have any of C2 or C3 done, but right now we're just looking at C3. So, as I look at the negative 6, should I move that to the numerator, from the numerator to the denominator? It's negative. Is it a negative exponent? This is like a 1, so that negative 6 stays in the numerator. So now I'm looking at the A. If I was looking at the A, Micah, what should I do? So now I'm going to write it down here, and it's going to be A to the second. Okay? Treasure, if I'm looking at B, C to the second, what should I do with that? Keep it up there? Yeah. Or move it? I have no clue. No clue. Emma, can you help us? Keep it up there. Why? It's not negative. Because it's not negative. So we are never moving, we never want to move something if it's positive. We're going to keep it where it's at. And so then we're looking at the D to the negative 4. And if I'm looking at that, Alexis, I should do what? Move it. So tell me where I should write it. Uh, at the top. D to the fourth. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at as you are looking at yours. As you do the problem, you should be checking them in the back. The answers are there for you to take a look at. If you don't get the right answer, you want to make sure that you go back and you had something written down for 15 and it's nothing close then you want to go back and show the work and get it right, right? You want to make sure that this was a negative 2, now it's positive, which meant you had to take the reciprocal of these. And then you should show me, oh, that means 6t times 6t over 5s times 5s to get your answer, okay? If you would please turn to your notes. And we're going to look at the C4 notes. So the C4 notes, at the beginning of the unit, we talked about the expanded form. Would you please right now write out the expanded form for both of these? Okay? So M to the fourth, how many M should I be writing down? Eight. Four of them, right? And M to the second is going to be? How many more? Two more. So that my answer that I'm looking at should be m to the sixth. This one's a little trickier, but if we're thinking of y to the negative 1, we might rewrite that as y to the 1 in our denominator, right? And then we have y times y times y. That's our y to the third. <laughs> what does my answer look like it should be for y to the third times y to the negative one. How many y's am I left with in the numerator? Should be y to the second. Does that kind of make sense to everyone? That those y's, y over y is the same as one. But we want to think of a shortcut of not writing them out like this in expanded form. Anyone remember from the beginning what we said the shortcut was? When we're multiplying, what are we doing with those exponents? Adding. We are adding them. So if you have the same base, we are going to add our exponents, right? It only works when you have the same base, okay? Only works when we have the same base. So in this video that I'm going to put on, 
they kind of want you towards the end to answer these questions and you could possibly answer them without watching the video but this last one's a little tricky but I'm going to put the video on so that you can take a look at this and while you're watching the video I am going to hand out what's your guess what's your guess let's explore let's explore yeah. In this lesson, you will learn how to multiply two or more exponential expressions by exploring and generalizing a pattern. Let's review. Let's review. An, exponent An exponent tells you how many times to multiply a base number by itself. So a multiplication statement like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 can be rewritten in exponential form as 2 to the fifth power, where 2 is the base and 5 is the exponent, also known as the power. Also, the also, associative property the associative of property multiplication of states that you can regroup, regroup numbers in a multiplication numbers. sentence. Okay. Notice that this property Notice states we can either multiply A times B, times B, then multiply the result by C, and it will be the same as if we multiply B by C, but we multiply the result by A. Here's an example with actual numbers. If we multiply 2 by 3, we get 6, then we multiply that by 4. Or if we multiply 3 by 4 first, we get 12, then multiply that by 2. Either way, we get 20. Back to the original Back question. The original question. Here I have written each of the exponential expressions in parentheses with no operations in between. Anytime two parentheses are written next to each other with no operation in between, the operation is multiplication. Often, students think that 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th equals 2 to the 12th because they, they multiply the two exponents. Or they think that the answer is 4 to the 12th because they multiply the bases and the exponents. But we'll quickly find that neither is correct. We know that 2 to the 3rd power means 2 times 2 times 2. And we know that 2 to the 4th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Since we are multiplying these two expressions, we can simply write them next to each other. And now, using the associative property, we can regroup it so that instead of multiplying the 2's in separate parentheses, we can multiply them one at a time in one of the big parentheses. So we see 2 multiplied by itself 7 times. Knowing what we do about exponents, we can write this more simply as 2 to the power of 7. So 2 to the 3rd so times 2 to the 4th was not 2 to the 12th, as some might have expected, because we are not multiplying 2 by itself 12 times. The answer is actually 2 to the 7th. We can verify this by actually completing the multiplication for each exponential expression. 2 to the 3rd means 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the 4th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 to the 7th means 2 times itself 7 times. 2 to the 3rd ends up being 8, while 2 to the 4th ends up being 16, and 2 to the 7th is 128. 8 times 16 is 128, so we get the same result either way. Now, 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th is equal to 2 to the 7th. Do you see a pattern here? Do you see a pattern here? Notice that the exponent Notice on the product, the 7, product, was the same as the sum of the exponents the in the original multiplication, the original multiplication sentence, 3 and 4. Three and four. This makes sense because this we multiply the total of seven twos. Seven twos. This will always happen this will always when multiplying happen. exponential we'll expressions with the, expressions the same base. The, same base. the new exponent the new is the total exponent. number of the times we're multiplying the base by itself. the base by itself. Here we have b Here as a base b as multiplied a base. by itself a times. times. Then that result is multiplied result by b as a base multiplied, multiplied, multiplied by itself c times. A plus c just represents the total number of times we use b as a base. Here's an example. We are to simplify this expression by rewriting it as a single exponential expression. First notice that the base of both exponents is 10. So I want you to visualize expanding this to 4 tens in a multiplication sentence times Times seven more tens in a multiplication tens sentence. Tens Once we do this, we Once see this, eleven tens in a multiplication tens sentence. Tens My hope is that you soon start visualizing this expansion on your own, and you can see that you can just take the sum total of four plus seven, or get ten to the eleventh power. In this next example, notice that both of the bases are some number x. So I want you to visualize expanding this into. 3x's in a multiplication x's sentence, in a multiplication times 15 more times x's 15 in a multiplication, more x's multiplication sentence. sentence. Can you see the string of 3 plus 15 x's, plus 15 or 18 x's, or 18 x's in a multiplication x's sentence? In a multiplication so the sentence. answer is so the x, answer to the is x to the 18th. Be careful with this last example. This last example. Notice that two of the three Notice bases the are the same, bases they're are four. The same. But the third base is a 2. So we can use the commutative property to reorder the problem so that the two similar bases are right next to each other. We now see that we'll add the exponents and the 4s and get 4 to the 8th. 
but 2 to the 3rd has to stay separate because it has a different base. So this is our final answer. In this lesson, you have learned how to multiply two or more exponential expressions by exploring and generalizing the pattern. So if we are looking at that, Okay. So, as I was looking at your notes, the first two, pretty easy. You were just adding those together. 4 plus 7 gives us 11. 3 plus 15 gives us x to the 18. And then in this last one, like they said, you want to regroup it. And I would take that answer written that way. I would also take it this way. If you put it as 2 to the 3rd, and if you don't like using those parentheses and you wanted to put times 4 to the 8th, that would work also, right? So I take it either way as you are looking at those. Sometimes, like yesterday's lesson, we talked those parentheses are really, really important and we need to keep those. So Lily. Oh, what you wrote it down like you would multiply the answer together so it would be... Um, it, at this point, it's going to probably tell you to keep it as a power. So if the directions say keep it as a power, then you're going to keep it like this. But if it just says simplify, then you'd multiply those out on your calculator and get that in. Okay? So yeah, you'll see both of those. Like most of ours in today's assignment, if you look um, at that next going down in your notes or, that, or at the top of the next page, it'll say, leave answer as a power, okay? So that is the key thing that as I'm doing these, I want to leave it as a power. So what am I going to ask for you to do? It's so easy to make really simple mistakes. So yes, 3 plus 4 gives us 7 to the 7th seven. power. I'll have some people only write this, and I'll show you kind of just like even some simple mistakes that they'll make. So please do the next two, actually do the next three. So you're going to tell me in this one it's going to be negative 6 to what power? 24 to what power? Do that right now. What does it all say? You're going to add those, so they're right in your notebooks. Right there, do them there. So if I am looking, Cole, what would you say negative 6 is to the what? 19th. We're taking 12 plus 5, right, plus 2, negative 6 to the 19th power, right? If I'm taking a look at the next one, Brooke, 24 to the... Uh -huh. So we're going to have 3 plus negative 5, which would give us, what did you say? If we're adding those. So we're going to have negative 2. 3 plus a negative 2, remember when you did integers last year, if the signs are opposite, you're actually subtracting them, it stays as negative 2. This is where on Friday's quiz, if you left this as an answer, I have to mark it wrong. What did we do in yesterday's assignment that we got to continue using. No negative exponents, right? So I'm going to finish this problem with rewriting it as 1 over 24 to the second. I'm not going to put it in my calculator and put a decimal or a fraction. I'm going to leave it as that power, 1 over 24 to the second. Tanisha, if we're doing this next one, 9 to what power? Just 9, so 9 to the first. Is that what you get when you added those together? Yeah. So you're adding 6 plus negative 4 plus negative 2. What do you get? So 6 plus negative 4 is how much? 2 plus negative 4 is 2. And 2 plus negative 2 is? 0. So if you don't want to put a 1, if it's not equal to 1, right? Now, if this would have been a negative 1, I would have said you were correct. But, again, if you leave this answer on the quiz, I have to take off points, right? Because this can be simplified to rewrite that answer as just 1. Okay? So 9 to the 0 equals 1. So making sure no negative exponents anywhere in your homework as you finish this unit, right? No negative exponents ever, and then we're going to use our rule for multiplying. Okay? So the next one down, they get a little more complicated. It says we're multiplying powers with variables. And we're still doing this in that same way as we look at it. So when I look at this problem, I want to rearrange, and I'm going to use that commutative property and put 4 times 9. 
And then instead of writing down both z's, I'm going to put z to the fifth plus negative 12. Write it down the same time as I'm writing mine. So we're going to do our multiplication. 4 times 9 gives us 36. We're going to add z to the 5 plus negative 12. Some of you haven't written anything. Do not have a pencil just? There you go. Keep writing with this. So that if we are looking at this, I should have Sam Z to the what? Negative 10. Negative 10. Negative 10. So earlier in class, one of the other classes, all of a sudden they decided to put negative 2. They put 5 plus negative 2. But they showed their work, right? And then they said, oh, this is 3. And then all of a sudden someone said, no, 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 that's not right. So it's really easy for you to just write down the wrong number, right? And if I'm grading this and it's like a three-point question on how did you do this, and if I see this is negative 7, or maybe I see 2, but I see, oh, you got it because you changed the negative 12 to a 2, right? I at least can see what you did. If you don't write anything down, and there's many of you that prefer to write nothing and just give your answers, I have to take off all the points. So I just want you to be aware of that. So in this one, Chastity, as we finish the problem, we're going to look at what? Okay, some of you are leaving your answers 37z to the negative 7, which would be wrong. What do we need to do? One more, a little louder. Put the numerator on the denominator. Okay, so put 36 down here. 36 and z to the 7. And a 1 up here. Everyone in agreement? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is scary. Oh, no, 36 no. The 36 oh, shouldn't move, right? Is the 36 a negative exponent here? No, there's no exponent, so it's understood to be a 1. You cannot move that 36. You are only moving the negatives, right? So it's 36 over z to the 7th for my answer. Okay? Those are the kind of small mistakes. These are questions like that you're going to see on the quiz coming up on Friday, and we can even get a little uglier like in homework. So we're going to rewrite this next one. Put the numbers down in order, right? We're going to put the numbers down. So we're going to rewrite it as 2 times 9 times 3. <coughs> we're going to rearrange it. 2 times 9 times 3. Next, we are going to start with putting A. What are my exponents for A basis? I'm looking at this. Okay, so how about in the front? So we have a to the first plus 2, and then I have the b to the fourth, right? So I'm looking at 18 times 3 or 6 times 9. I should be getting 54. a is going to be to the third, b to the fourth. No negative exponents, don't have to move anything. I'm done with the problem, okay? <coughs> Irvin, start me out on the next one. How should I do it? Numbers first. So four times. Yep. Yeah. Ah, I'm going to put negative five plus negative three. I get where you get the negative eight. So I'm going to get 8t to the negative 8. So Aiden, help me finish the problem. Can I leave it like this? No. On the test, I get not full credit on the quiz Friday. So what am I going to do? You would take the 8 on top and move the 2 to the bottom and then turn and positive 8. Positive 8. Okay. Again. As you start writing these, put your numbers first, 4 times the 7 times the 2. You're going to do the same thing when you do your homework, okay? You're going to do that same type of thing as we do our homework. So when we are looking at these, we're going to put all of those down, and then we're going to put our C's. Now, I had some people that prefer to put C to the 3rd times C to the negative 2. I have other people that like to put 3 plus negative 2. I don't care which way you do it, but you want to group your C's together, and then you're going to put your D's, okay? So try that one and check with your shoulder partners, people you're sitting by, to see what we're getting for an answer, and I'm going to start this next one out. 
you should be writing or doing something with your shoulder partner to make sure you're on with it. You guys don't even have this written down on your paper that I have up here. Write it down, what I have up there on your paper. He does or don't. You need to write that. Okay? All right. Uh, Mara, Jamie, what do you guys have? Negative what? Negative 56. C is going to be to what power? We're adding 3 plus negative 2. So we're going to have C to the 1. Anything to do with the D? Nope. D to the second? Oh, I have this answer. Negative 56 C, D to the second. Are these two the same answers? No. Yes, and I take it either way. If you want to keep that one in there for an exponent, by all means write it. But make sure you go back and put all the words before that. Put that on your paper. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? Olivia, how about that last one? What are you guys looking at? Green and Jordan, what do you have? Okay, do it. Multiply these, right? Nine times five gives us yes, forty-five. X to the seven. Y six, right? No negative exponents. We're leaving it. The key thing is, some of you will sometimes forget to write down one of them, so just make sure that you've covered all of them. So, like, sometimes crossing it off, oh, I've used both X's as I look at that, okay? So your homework is the C4, okay? All of it. C4 is 1 through 17. You will see the next page says C4B. At this point, I'm not assigning any of the C4B, but to me, when I look at C4B, there's some questions that, like the harder one, that's probably what you're going to see on the chat quiz, right? So like 16, 17, 18, maybe number 12, um, some of these with the fraction, like 14, and then 19 to 24. Um, you are not assigned to do any of it, but my hint would be that if you finish C4 today, I would, and you got time, I'd pick out some of the ones, especially the harder ones, and make sure you're checking. I'm going to move your desk back just a little. There you go. And um, make sure that you're kind of checking your work over and looking at those, and if they make sense.